You are now tuned in to Go Time Dolphins with Charlie Touche and Kadeem Simmons, the Miami Dolphins podcast that's for the fans and by the fans. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. And it's your time. Going all out when it's go time. Go, go. I ain't wasting no time. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. Cause it's your time. Lay it on the line when it's go time. Don't waste no time. This guy says, let's go. And then start drinking from a company we're not even sponsored by. Like, you literally said, let's go. Done. Bit of early housekeeping on off the top. I incorrectly said, said on the last episode that um, Woody in Toy Story 2 was bought at a yard sale. I was incorrect. I was corrected by my friend Drakey. Um, Drakey helpfully pointed out that our stole Woody. I was like, yes, of course, because you know there is no way. I, I misremember. I misremembered it. I'll try to buy Woody. Woody's my um. Uh, what's the child's name in Toy Story? Andy. Andy. Yes. Andy's mom said he's not for sale. At which point, Al stole Woody. So, apologies for that. Keeping on a light-hearted mood before we dive into the preview show. Um, there has been a player that has been linked to the Dolphins. Um, in a trade, that is Washington cornerback William Jackson. Um, Jackson has or Jackson allegedly wants out of Washington a more man corner than zone corner. And it seems that the Dolphins have, according to reports, have shown some interest alongside. So that's kind of, you know, known out there. But I thought I'd also throw you a kind of two for one question. So do you have any interest in William Jackson, the corner? And in terms of, I guess, loading up this team to make a playoff run, a deep playoff run this year, would you have any interest in adding Odell Beckham Jr. in free agency? Or, you know, free agent Odell Beckham, Odell Beckham Jr. And how are you? I'm well, bro. How are you doing, Kadeem? Yeah, I'm good. I um I found out that for the month of November, I will not be working. I basically had so much time holiday to take before the end of the year. Work said, take November off. So why not? I ain't gonna lie when someone tell you to take off that much time. <laughs> Come back to no job. What? <laughs> they, they, they might, hey, you know what? We just realized we don't need you no more. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yo. It's Go Time Dolphins, the Miami Dolphins podcast that goes not only across the pond, but across the world. I'm your boy, Charlie Touche. I got my co-host, Kadeem Simmons, with me. It's always for the fans and by the fans. Your favorite podcast, favorite podcast. Um, yeah, man, I'm interested in all the cornerback help we can get. I'm not interested in overpaying for help that may not be extended or may not be here in two years' time. So it would have to be for the right compensation. And I, I'm willing, I'm willing. Again, I, I believe this is our window, man. I believe. We're a year ahead of the schedule. For those who don't know, GTD, Go Time Dolphins, Charlie Touche said the Miami Dolphins will win the Super Bowl in 2024. Tua is going to win a Super Bowl in his rookie during his rookie contract. That's what I've been saying since we since inception or conception. Inception. I think it's. It's inception. inception. I think it's inception. Yeah. Yes, it's in, in, inception. So um, I do believe we're we're gonna be in in there, locked in. Uh, but this is our window. Now, if the Dolphins want to mess around and win the Super Bowl this year, that's cool. But we have to put as many pieces in the right place as possible. And I think corner help is is for everyone who came at my dome during two shades 24 and mock draft season and said oh my goodness why are you wasting a pick on on corners ta-da we're here so yeah man especially a young corner like 
X is not going to be around forever. Byron Jones is not going to be around forever. And while we're on Byron Jones, he's still not ready, unfortunately. So it looks like Byron Jones may be out for a minimum of another two weeks. Minimum. That's not that's not encouraging. What is encouraging, though, we should have Tua back by 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 Pittsburgh it's week seven. And, you know, you get to a back against the <laughs> – shout out to the same old Dolphins and Aaron DeBrain. Uh, during, uh, you get to a back during these games where we're playing teams that have – that are quarterback challenged. You know what I'm saying? It's easier for us to uh, – it's, it's more – we're more inclined to win these games. So, on the OBJ, I don't know, bro. I, I, I'm going to say no because we do have Cedric Wilson hanging around. I, I would like to think OBJ would want a contract for more than one season. I don't think he's ready to be a mercenary out here, just a, a, a sell sort. You, you remember Game of Thrones? What do you remember with the dude's name in Game of Thrones? That that was for sale. Like, hey, I work for the highest bidder. Ah, uh, I don't. It's gonna bug me now as well. Um, I want to say the name again of a B, but. That's what Google is for. Uh... All right, so Kadeem's gonna spoil it for. It's not a spoiler alert, but uh, he's gonna he's gonna ruin the question. So I hope you guys figured it out before Kadeem says it. But there's a dude in Game of Thrones like, look, I don't care what side I fight for, I'm going to the side with the most money that pays me the most. So I don't think OBJ is ready to do that and play for one season at a time. But I do think he he wants a quarterback and long. I don't want to say longevity, but he wants to make as much money as he can and 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 work for a couple of years or a, a, a few years. So I I do think two is ready for that, but I don't think the Dolphins are ready for OBJ for multiple seasons because we have Tyreek Hill, we have Jalen Waddle who's going to get his contract eventually, and we have Cedric Wilson. Then we have Easy E. Go ahead. So like I said. I felt I felt it began with the letter B. It was Bron, and I was like, Bron came to my mind. Like, no, because it sounds so much like Brian and Brand, but no, it was Bron. So yeah, Bron from Game of Thrones. Bron, I don't, I don't remember it like that. But if you say so, unless we think of someone totally different. So I'm no, no, no. I, 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 if you, yeah, if you, what, what did you look up? How about that? Uh first of all, I typed in. Game of Thrones, Tyrion, Bodyguard, and it gave me Blonde. Okay, we'll go over that. What do you think about OBJ? Um, I think we discussed it on the previous on the last episode, which is basically the Dolphins have enough, or the Dolphins have more than enough playmakers who aren't being utilized. So to add another one right now kind of does seem counterproductive. Yes, it would be great if the Dolphins line up with Jalen Waddle, Tyreek Hill, Mike Kosicki, and Odo Beckham Jr. Like that's brilliant. Oh my days, who are you gonna guard and stuff like that? But the fact that we are basically six weeks in now and we're still having discussions on how we're gonna get best use out of Mike Kosicki and Cedric Wilson Jr. I don't think you need to add even more you know, even more players into a situation where, you know, there are, there are talented guys. Like, this isn't this isn't the conversation we was having in year one and year two of two as, you know, Dolphins' career was like, just get the guy help. Like, what are we doing? We have the help. Now it's about utilising all of the help and not just, you know, one or two players. So it's a no from me on Odo Beckham Jr. And it's a no for me, dogs. Got to go into the two gloves, though. Yeah, I already. I would have thought two gloves would have been rested, given he's. I not... mean, I, I just I said I was going to rock two gloves until until Tua came back. I didn't know it was going to be for one play. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I got I got to honor what I said. Um, yeah, man. But interesting since we're talking about two gloves, Skylar Thompson looks like he's going to get the st- well. Skylar Thompson's going to get the start uh, Sunday versus the Vikings. Do you think Teddy makes an appearance? Because I'm sure Teddy's going to be the backup. Do you believe Skylar Thompson plays the entire game? Or do you think Teddy 
comes in and, and spells them? It's, 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 it's a funny one. So same way I didn't want to see Skyler when Teddy was the starter. I don't want to see Teddy if Skyler's the starter. And we and you made it crystal clear, you know, again, during Tua's first two years, that even if we're losing, let Tua see the game out. You have to see if Tua can bring us back into the game. Now, it's different when it's your seventh-round quarterback who isn't the face of the franchise. And if it's a one-score game heading to the fourth and Skyler's struggling, do you not try and see if you can interject some life into the offense with Teddy Bridgewater? I'm of the belief that even in that situation, you should probably stick with Skyler. And I say that because the... It's weird. Yes, Teddy came in and I guess kept the game close enough that we almost beat the Bengals. But I just think that given Teddy right now isn't 100% and yes, the offense struggled last week against the Jets. If it's a one-score game heading into the fourth, you might as well ride it out. It's not like it's a complete blowout. So, no, I don't think we see Teddy unless there's a significant injury, which you know, means that Skyler is unable to finish the game. How about you? That was a pretty good take, Kadeem. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> um, I hadn't thought of it like, you know, let Tua rally back. And if, if if he goes down, he can win his teammates over. But Skyler Thompson isn't the star court, isn't the franchise quarterback. You know what I'm saying? We need to eke out wins by any means necessary. So if it means Cedric Wilson coming in and running the Wildcat or going back to his high school days of quarterback, I think he played quarterback sometime back then somewhere. Maybe it was college. I don't know. I but it was high school. I, man, it doesn't matter how we get this W. We have to give everything. We have to leave everything on the field to get this W. So – do I think we see Teddy? I'm going to say no. I think, so it's not like, and this isn't a negative on Teddy's skill set, but it's not like Teddy is so good at one thing that like, if he was a extremely mobile quarterback, that like, might be like, you know what? We've got a few plays in and around the goal line where we're going to make the best use of Teddy's legs or something like that. Or, even though Jacoby Brissett isn't, you know, for Jacoby Brissett's side, for whatever reason, Coach Flores thought that it would be a good idea to have him in on, you know, third and one, fourth and one, and try and get sneaks. Teddy, he doesn't have that kind of skill set. So I can't see a situation where there are certain plays where Teddy would come in, you know, like you said, you know, Cedric Wilson in a, you know, a wildcat, something like that. I don't think there's any specific specific plays in which you would bring in Teddy, if that makes sense. So I don't think it's a situation where, on oh my days, it's third and three, this is a perfect Teddy play. To me, both Teddy and Skylar can do, I guess, similar things. Obviously, Teddy's got the experience, but Skylar's probably got the athleticism on, it, on him right now. So no, I can't imagine um, Teddy coming in at all. And I think there were a lot of people who were like, well, Surely you go with the experienced guy, even if he's had a limited week over, you know, Skylar Thompson. But I think given the way the NFL has been over the past few weeks, there would have been no guarantee that, in my opinion anyway, that Teddy, Brid Teddy Bridgewater was definitely going to return on third day. It was likely given the timeline in the concussion protocol, but all it took was a, a rogue NFL you know, member of staff to say, actually, we've seen something on the tape, which means that Teddy has to sit out for another two days. And you don't want to be in a situation where you name Teddy the starter, despite the fact he's had no reps all week. And then on a Saturday, you go, but actually, you know what, it's going to be Skylar. So I think the way, I know it's one part of the question, but I think the way Mike McDaniel handled the, who was starting this Sunday, ultimately, in my opinion, he got it right. And I say that now, even if the Dolphins lose and Skyler completely stinks out of the place, I still think Mike McDaniel handled the quarterback situation this week the best he could. Oh, for sure. 
Like, what is? I think I think there was a, a media availability, a media availability, where I still didn't say it, but there was a media press conference <laughs> <laughs> where Mike McDaniel was like, "Man, me and um, what's the quarterback coach name? Daryl Daryl Bevel, yeah, Bevel." He was like, yeah, me and Bevel, we're, we're good dudes, but we're not the best conversationalists. You know what I'm saying? So Scott didn't have nobody to talk to, no Teddy, no Tua. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to go with Skyler because he was available during during the script, during practice. I think he had two practices this week, and Teddy only had one today, right? So maybe three practices, and Teddy only had one today. So two was not available, and – Teddy wasn't available. So while you're the mad genius drawing up how do I beat the Vikings, there's only one thing you had uh, um, accessible to you, to you during the, the making of the script. So what I think is, Kadeem, we're going to see more rushing attempts from Skylar Thompson this week. Not saying that he can't throw the ball, but I'm saying shout out to Sherrod Steve because he brought this up. And I said, that's a good point, uh, Sherrod Steve. And I forgot the point. I don't want to go <laughs> look it up. But I do believe he said something of the nature that he'd rather go with Skyler than Teddy this week. Not saying that Skyler is a better quarterback than Teddy, but there's no tape on Skyler Thompson. We don't. No one knows what they're going to get with Skyler Thompson. So if we don't know what we're going to get with Skylar Thompson, the Vikings don't know what they're going to get with Skylar Thompson. So the element of surprise is there. And that was a great point. I thought Sherrod Steve brought out. Shout out to Sherrod Steve. Shout out, shout out to Sherrod Mini. Um, I think I like it. He actually convinced me. I like, why would just throw Teddy in? You know what I'm saying? Like put Teddy in regardless of how much time he had. Right. So I'm okay with Skylar Thompson starting. I don't know if I'm okay with Skylar Thompson finishing. So we'll we'll save that for for the the game predictions. But I, I really want to see him be more active with his feet, even in non-called run plays, quarterback run plays. If it's not there, run it. Just just you should have Skylar Thompson should have over 40 yards rushing this game. He should have. Is that gonna be an easy money? Nah, because I don't think they're going to draw him up like that. But he should have more than 40 yards rushing this game. Uh, shout out to uh, my boy Hans. He's, he's the dude, my, my workout partner. Like that. When I was throwing up my 225, he was, he was the one who getting me right. So Hans was like, bro, we shouldn't run Skylar Thompson. I'm like, why not? He's like, what if he gets hurt? Then what? What are we going to do? We just running everybody into the ground. So no one knows, bro. We don't know. Like, we're in a place where we do not want to be right now at three and two. Yeah, we got the three and two somehow, some way, some shape, some form. But, man, I'm at a place where one more game, eke this game out by any means necessary. If you got to, if, if, t- where's the Debo Samuel Tyreek Hill at? You know what I'm saying? I know, I know Tyreek nursing an uh, injury right now, but this would have been nice to see Tyreek get some, some carries. You feel me? Like everyone runs the ball. And I wonder if 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 um 40 acres and a Hellcat is gonna get more touches too. And I know I was all over the place just now, but I I have no idea what we're gonna get Sunday, Kadeem. I think yeah, it's I know there are people who who will be like, we started three and oh, beat the Ravens and the Bills, and then we lost to the Bengals, lost to the Jets, and we might lose to the Vikings. That is same old Dolphins trademark, same old Dolphin show. But to me, it's like it's not. It's if you speak to any NFL franchise and say you're gonna not only lose your QB one, but your QB two, and throw in basically a seventh round or below, you know, quarterback, you're kind of expected to take losses. Not every Ain't no basically, bro. He is a seven round pick. Yeah, yeah, but I'm, yeah, but like, like I'm sure, like in, in case it's in the case of like a undrafted guy, not every mm-hmm. late round quarterback is gonna have some Gardner Minshew story. You know, like it's it, it doesn't happen. And yes, this roster is super talented, but when the quarterback has more touches than anyone, 
and especially the situation as well. Listen, I'm sure Skylar Thompson went into, you know, last Sunday's game against the Jets, you know, ready to step in if needed. But first snap, you're like, oh my days, I'm phoning already. And like we said on the review show, it's not like the Jets, you know, completely blew out the Dolphins over four quarters. With 10 minutes left to go, the score was 17-19, Dolphins down two, and we missed a field goal. It's one, it's one of those situations where, again, I'm not, a, I try not to be an ifs and buts person, but one play, you know, one thing goes completely different. The Dolphins managed to sneak out a win there. So I think that could also be why the Dolphins say, you know what, we're going to stick with Skylar because he came in and done, I guess, as well as possible if you want to be positive in his first game under such extreme conditions. Now the nerves have settled. He's had a full week with the starters. You're potentially going to get Teron Armstead back, potentially friend of the podcast, Austin Jackson back. The line might improve, which means that Skylar Thompson might be able to breathe a bit more. And yes, you said you want to see him rush more, but I don't want to see him rush more at the detriment of leaving passing yards on the field. I think there's, I've seen, I saw a few plays where he has a clean pocket and he kind of gets a bit antsy and tries to kind of run out of there. Believe in your line and believe that, you know, they're going to protect you. And if it starts to break down, then you go, you know. So it's definitely going to be an interesting situation to see how he copes in his first start. But this is where, you know, like you said, maybe you start running more Tariq away at the backfield. Maybe you get more touches from Mars, from Fender Podcast, Mars Gaskin. And hopefully the mad genius that is Mike McDaniel can, you know, basically guide... Skylar Thompson through this game and two, you know, Dolphins go in four and two. Teddy Bridgewater will be on a practice field today for Miami on a limited and non-contact basis, I'm told. Another step in the concussion protocol. That was from Ian Rappaport. And the very next comment on that tweet was, for a cushion he doesn't have, got it. What's going on with this concussion protocol, Kadeem? And why are people without concussions in the protocol? Do you want my sane answer? Or do you want, I don't know, just how it seems to be? Because part of me is, is part of me believe that the NFL are in the situation where due to the two-way injury, they're trying to be over, over, over safe. And because of that, I believe in a, in a concussion protocol for like four to five days, whatever it is. So because he was downgraded out on Sunday because of, con- because of a concussion, even though there was no sign of concussion, it basically placed in the protocol whether you like it or not. We think you have a concussion, so that five-day period starts now. And okay, you pass the test on the first day, but because you're already here, you kind of have to stay here. So it's a mess. It's stupid. I think it's the NFL's way of saying, okay, we don't be in a situation where you pass the test on the Sunday and then you go out there on a Monday and then you collapse and then you find out you had a concussion or a brain injury. I think it's them trying to save their own backs. But like a lot of people said, and I guess correctly, would they do the same if this was a Josh Allen slash Patrick Mahomes? Would they keep him in a concussion protocol? I believe yes, because I don't think that that's stupid. However, people rightfully pointed out that it's funny how the only quarterback this happened to this weekend or last weekend was the Miami Dolphins quarterback, Teddy Bridgewater. And there's still no evidence of him stumbling off the field. No one can find this evidence. Apart from this one spotter who doesn't have to provide any provide any evidence. He just said, Oh, I saw him stumble. And the NFL had to kind of agree with it, which makes no sense to me. That's I don't know if that's a ramble, but that's the most I can make sense of a really stupid situation at the moment. No, nah, I, I feel you, Kadeem. I feel like the fix is in. Like I feel like the, the, the NFL feel like the Dolphins got them there. So they're going to give us one back. Like, ah, you did this to us. We're going to give it to you. But I don't I don't like it, man. But that's where we're at right now. Uh, you got anything else before we go into no huddle? Um, 
I was going to say it's a bonus time, but it, it could be a very brief thing. Do you have any opinion on Ping Pong Gate? Do you even know what Ping Pong Gate is? Yeah, so for everyone listening, Tyreek Hill and the other captains on the team decided to remove the ping pong table from the locker room so people could focus more. Um, and, you know, everything the Miami Dolphins do, it gets national attention for some reason now. But whatever, we here. It is what it is. Uh, someone said, well, if you got to remove the ping pong table to have to 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 attain interest, you already you already lost. I feel like only the people in the locker room know what's best for the locker room. So if they don't respond and when I say don't respond, it doesn't necessarily mean we don't win. It just means they're captains for a reason. And they made this decision for a reason. And I got to believe a ping pong table wasn't the only thing that was adjusted. You see what I'm saying? So, so there's an update. Tyreek Hill on Thursday turned around and was like, yeah, I moved the table because it wasn't good enough. And we're getting a brand new table, basically, like Miami <laughs> Dolphins all over it. So, so, so it seems like, basically, it wasn't... So you get a story on Wednesday, which is what, which is, it was a move so they could focus more. And Hill says, no, I removed it because that was trash. And we're getting an even better one. The Dolphins all over it. It's Listen, like... man. Like, so the media was, you know, the media was on it heavy. So I didn't get that part of the update. I'm like, bro, if if only the people in the locker room know what the locker room need. You know what I'm saying? And I, our, our locker room is, to use a word you used recently, our locker room so jovial, bro. Like, it's so, so organic how the way everyone just gels. That I gotta believe at three and two, focus is not an issue yet, or lack of focus is not an issue. But nah, man. Especially, especially the context as well. It's three and two down two quarterbacks. Like this isn't, you know, the Dolphins have fallen off a cliff. The Dolphins have suffered injuries, and those injuries have contributed to losses. And in both those losses, they were in the game in the fourth quarter before it got too much. Like there's no panic. There's no need to press the get rid of blow it all up and start again like it's not that it's once everyone's healthy we'll see this team or hopefully we'll see the team that was 3-0 not only that uh, Kadeem I think that has everything to do with what me and you were saying we came on after two losses and we were still we were still bouncing like hey this is not like last season when we when we take an L and it was like man I don't even want to record I don't even want to go to work I feel like I just, you know, all kind of stuff. You feel me? So it, it that's not the feeling we got. We understand that one for myself, had we not lost our quarterback, we'd be five and oh. And that leads me to this. The Bengals are still still the kittens. <laughs> they still the kittens. They still losing. They beat us with a backup quarterback. Like, nah, bro. The Bengals are not it. You know what I'm saying? So nah, man. We'll be we're all right. Uh it was seven six when Tua went out in that game. Bengals barely pulled that off with, with our backup. And then it was 19-17 in the fourth quarter with 10 minutes left against the paper planes. So we'll be okay. What we don't want to do is put ourselves in a hole so hard where it's it's just a lot to climb out of. So we we gotta we gotta do whatever we gotta do to uh to get this W. And we about to get into no huddle. So Kadeem's gonna tell us what the elements are gonna be. Uh, just to clarify, Kadeem will not be saying a single word. It's Coach K. Like, <laughs> Kadeem, Kadeem taking a rest. It's Coach K. Um, and Coach K obviously needs a number of things. Needs his headset. Headset, cool plays. Playbook. This guy. Playbook. And it's this also going to go, you know, going to go this way. Nah, nah. We're going to keep it the same way it is. Don't change the winning formula. So, as you asked for on the last episode, mm -hmm. the weather on Sunday is going to be 28 degrees Celsius. What's that in Fahrenheit? 28 degrees Celsius. Hold on, that's the regular way we're doing it. But I, we'll, we'll, we'll still do it. We'll still do it. Uh, is that the regular way? Yeah, no, no, that's, that's the right way. Okay. Is it? Yeah, yeah. All right. it, it, it don't matter. I, I, still, I still got it, bro. It, it's nothing. Uh, 28 degrees Celsius. All right, y'all work with me. 
because it's a podcast and I'm trying to entertain the podcast by not having so much dead air, but I'm trying to think too. So give me a second. So we got 28 degrees Celsius. Um, times this plus that. I'm going to say, so you said 28? Yeah. So the threshold, it's in between 88 degrees. It's in between 86 and 90. So I'm going to go with 88. Uh, I've got 83 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, my goodness, bro. That's an L. That's an L. That's that not close. Well. That Dang, well. bro. 28. Hold on. Let me. All right. Go ahead. Do your thing, bro. I, I figure out where I went wrong. Go ahead. And then the injury report as of Thursday is somewhat looking better. So, Teron Armstead and Elijah Campbell did not participate on Thursday. And then in a limited capacity, we had Teddy Bridgewater, Eric Ezukama, Clayton Fedulum, Xavier Howard, friend of the podcast, Robert Jones, Katie Kohu, Raheem Mostert, Zach Sealer, Derm Smythe, and QB1 to a Tonga Vailoa. And then full participants, we had Tana Connor, Tyree Kill, friend of the podcast, Brandon Jones, Greg Little, and Jalen Waddle. That is it for the injury report. I you can see enough my phone. And yeah, it sounds like things are getting healthier. It was also confirmed that Raheem Mostert will play on Sunday and that as will Tyreek Hill as he's not about out of his walking boot. I blew that Fahrenheit and Celsius. But I'm 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 so you know my our record's like my record's like three and two two right now on, on the Celsius Fahrenheit. I gotta get better. I gotta I got tighten up. Uh fantasy football. I'm staying away from Skylar Thompson unless this man is about to come up and pull his, his best Lamar Jackson impersonation or or Josh Allen impersonation and run the ball for like 80 yards. You gotta stay away from Josh. Uh Skylar Thompson. So <laughs> Go ahead, and I mentioned this last time. If you had to start a running back, I told you which running back to start, and it is very clear that Raheem Moster is RB1 for the Miami Dolphins, and the surfboard may make an appearance. Hmm. Surfboard will make an appearance this game for everyone who knows what the surfboard is. Uh, I'm a man, let's go with gotta go with Jalen Waddle, gotta go with Tyreek Hill, gotta stay away from the tight ends. It's, 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 it's here. We're here. It's very clear. We're staying away from the tight ends in fantasy football for the Miami Dolphins. Um, I ain't going to lie to you, Kadeem. I'm staying away from the Dolphins defense, and I'm also staying away from Jason Sanders. But hear me out. The Dolphins defense will have opportunities again because Kirk Cousins holds the ball forever. Kirk Cousins will give you the game. He will give you a pick. He will give you sacks. He will give you strip sacks. Start Dolphins defense. Let's do it. Y'all heard it right here. We just we just had an audible. I just talked myself into it. We starting Dolphins defense. Uh, other side of the ball, Dalvin Cook could can have over 100 yards rushing. And I'm not even going to lie to you. He, he may have over 100 yards rushing. Go ahead and start Dalvin Cook. I'm going to say go ahead and start Kirk Cousins. You know, you don't know what our DBs look like right now. You got Justin Jefferson over there. He's going to go haywire. Just start Justin Jefferson. Bench Irv Smith. Start Minnesota defense. And that's all I got for you on, on uh, for, for no huddle. Fins up Friday, man. Fins up Friday, Kadeem. Whew. What's you got going on, Kadeem? Yeah, but say um, it's 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 an it's an odd one, you know. Really, really, really want to head into next Sunday's game against Pittsburgh four and two. It relieves some of the pressure on the team, get back to winning ways, and plus, like we said, don't be in a situation. Where two are coming back, you know, from his injury, and you know that three and zero starts gone, especially in games in which we should be the favourite. So, I think from looking at 
the clips of Tua's return to to on practice. Looking at how buoyant the team is right now, I think the team are in a good space. Did you say and, buoyant? Yeah. Buoyant. Yeah. What do you think buoyant means, Kadeem? I think it means happy, like joyful. I ain't gonna lie. I, I don't know. We might have to. We might have to review it. We might have to throw the red flag on that. What do you, what do you got? We we fact check, stat check. What what buoyant means? Uh two. It's an adjective. Two definitions: able or tending to keep afloat or rise to the top of a liquid or gas, or cheerful and optimistic. Oh, hey, Kadi, I know the buoyant of floating because you know I was born on the water, South Beach. You know I, I'm from Miami. I didn't know buoyant had had another meeting of, of cheerful. That's what's up, man. You just talk. You talk to listen to something. I like that, Kadeem. It's one of those things where I guess being a sport journalist comes like managers say it all the time. You know, it was a. It's, it's, it's one of those words that I've probably written more times in the past eight years as a journalist than I've ever said ever in my life. It's one of those random things. Um, yeah. So, but bro, I never <laughs> use the word buoyant. I, bro, never, never. It's the exact same way as well. That's crazy. I wonder how many people knew that. And I, I, I wonder how many people would be honest and say they knew that. But listen, comment let's, get in, let, let's get into, uh, yeah, comment. Hey, did you know Buoyant had two meeting, me, meetings? That's crazy. And I'm pretty sure the, the, the floating one is the one that people knew the most. Did you know that, Kadeem, about the floating one? The floating yeah, part? I did, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I can get Kadeem that one. Hey, let's go into Easy Money, man. So, Easy Money, we're not looking good right now, fellas. Ladies and gentlemen, I should say, we're two and three with the easy money. Two of them came because Tua was hurt. Uh, yeah, two. Uh, yeah, two of them came because Tua was hurt. And I, I said, go ahead and take the money line against the paper planes. And I wonder if I would have went. I probably would have still went money line against the paper planes just because of my ego, and I didn't want to lose to the paper planes. But it is what it is. I should have. I should have been more careful with with the picks you know what I'm saying some this this is a example do not bet with your heart don't bet with your heart bet with your brain so we're going to we're going to go easy money this week DraftKings has not put up any other props yet because they don't know who the quarterback is going to be so we go to DraftKings if you go to DraftKings right now at the time of recording they they are only Minnesota Vikings props up there are no Miami Dolphin props up however I'm still going to put my skills to the test and try to give you at least one easy money pick of the week. And at Miami Dolphins total points, 16 over 16 and a half, you get minus 250 odds. So Skylar Thompson, bro, get me back to uh, 500 and, and, and get me out of the out of the red. Take the Miami Dolphins. Over 16 and a half minus 250. That's the easy money pick of the week. Kadeem, what is your prediction for the game and what would the score be? You said don't bet with, you say don't bet with your heart. Mm -hmm. I think, I think the Dolphins lose a close one. I think the Dolphins lose 27 24, or that's 27 23. Um, and I, but and I say that I don't think it's going to be a game where Skylar Thompson looks exposed. I think it's a game in which a more a quarterback with a bit more experience, a bit more know how, um, get get to get to win. And I'm sure people then go, "Why not start Teddy Bridgewater?" I I'm not going to sit there and go, "Oh, should I start Teddy?" We were we you know we dealt with the cards that were given to us. I just think, same way you said, had we known Skylar Thompson was going to start against the Jets, we probably would have altered, you know, our our take on that game. I think Skylar Thompson will do enough to keep it close, but not enough to get the win. So I'm going 27, 24, 23. So I have the Minnesota Vikings winning 27, 17. Luckily, my easy money pick of the week is going to be it. On, on the right side. So we'll get 17 points. We'll lose by 10. 
um, unfortunately. And the over under is 45 and a half for those who are wondering. So Kadeem has it going over and I have it going under. And I think it's the first time of the season, Kadeem, that we were on um, different sides of it, uh, uh, the over and the under. So interesting. You might want to stay away from the over under uh, if you rock with easy money. <sighs> That's it for easy money, but I got something else for you, Kadeem. What will it take for Skylar to, for us to see and, and, and hoping Skylar Thompson stays stays healthy? What will it take for us to see Teddy Bridgewater come in? Teddy, two gloves. Um, my joke, my joke, you know, answer would be the Dolphins are winning by forty in the fourth quarter. They say, "Yo, Teddy, you know, go out there, chuck up another two touchdowns against your former team and stuff like that." I think what it would take would be, I guess, a. See, no, see, I can't even say that. I was going to say a Coach Flores situation where the team just cannot move the ball. Um, I guess similar to, I guess more similar to when Tua came in to make his debut against the Jets, where the Dolphins were winning but hadn't got a single third down all game, and we kind of, like, you know what, we're going to win this game, but Tua will go out there. I don't even think Mike McDaniel would do that because I'm. I genuinely believe that Mike McDaniel is very aware of what pulling a pulling a quarterback in any game in any circumstances does to someone's confidence. And yes, if the moment is too big for Skylar Thompson, you pull him. You say, you know what, this week isn't your week. But again, he had us within two points last week. I can't imagine him completely failing. So I guess the only way I can see Teddy Bridgewater to come to this game would be an injury. And at that point, you just got to go, the Dolphins have the worst luck. Like, if Skylar Thompson gets injured, what what do you do? So I think I, gen- I honestly think that's the only way we see, we see Teddy Bridgewater come in against the Vikings. So good thing you say you were just joking. Because if the Dolphins go up 14... And it's the fourth quarter. Last thing I want to see Coach McDaniel do is pull Skylar Thompson in his first start to get his first win. So that I said, that I said 40, not 14, 14. Oh, he said 40, 40, 40, 40. Uh, yeah, that's the accent. That's that. See, Kadeem, that's that's the accent. But yeah, 40. if even even what you don't want to do is pull this man in his first NFL start and not let him get the complete the complete shutout or the complete game. So now. Nah, you're not gonna pull them no matter how 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 far or how how big we go up. Um, because it's the right circumstances, right? Well, when when do you pull Skyler or where do you pull Skyler Thompson if he wets the bed? You still want to give your team a chance. Um, I would say if you go down 17 and it's the third quarter, like the beginning of like halftime is halftime is like 17. I don't know if you're down 17 at halftime, you need to start thinking about it. Then you come out, you get that first possession. And then Skylar Thompson comes down the field and there's nothing. So now Minnesota gets the ball back. And now you, you're warming up, Teddy. You're going. You're going to the. You're going to the pen. So if if you if you if you're down 17, third quarter, and the offense is just not moving, Skylar Thompson has a total of, or the offense has a total. Yeah, Skylar Thompson has a total of 100, 90, like 88 yards passing. It's it's time to start thinking about warming up the bull, bullpen. Can I play devil's advocate? Holler at me. So you say if they're down 17 in the third quarter, what if it's a situation where the offense hasn't struggled, but there's been a few, you know, misses and stuff like that. And they say, that, you know, they're down seven. And then second half kicks off and special team decides, you know what, we're going to give up another massive, you know, kick return basically. Mm-hmm. And then you're down 14. And not really the offense fault, it's just like, Really, we're doing this again, and then 
a running back fumbles, it gets taken to the house or into field goal range, and then you're down 17. And it's not really the Skyler Thompson. It's just special teams and a fumble. If the if Dolphins are down 17, but Skyler Thompson hasn't wet the bed, would you still pull him because he hasn't done anything wrong? Or is it only if the down a significant amount of points and you can literally say Skyler Thompson missed open passes, struggled in the pocket, and again, this game is just generally too big for him? I'm going to tell you what I tell LB all the time. It depends what it looks like. Okay. That's what it really just depends on what it looks like. But in, in just a short form, short answer, if you're down 17, you have a quarterback that's capable, I'm thinking you're going to go to the bullpen. But it does matter what it looks like. Was it two kick returns that went to the house? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. But – at the end of the day, you still does 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 it look like Skylar Thompson is capable of overcoming a seventeen point deficit? It's not about what the oh, okay, it wasn't on Skylar Thompson. Well, that's that's fair that it's not on him, but does he look capable of bringing us back? So, and life ain't fair. But let's go into bonus time, man. Y'all know what time it is. Stay positive. Test negative for Kadeem Simmons. I'm Charlie Touche. Thank you for tuning in this time. Make sure you catch us next time on Go Time. Already. Make them lose their mind when it's your time. And it's your time. Going all out when it's go time. I ain't wasting no time. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. Cause it's your time. Lay it on the line when it's go time. Don't waste no time. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. And it's your time. I think it was last week, and it's kind of been brought up in the Dolphins press conferences and stuff like that. Um, this Dolphins defense hasn't really shown up, and someone who was mentioned in the press this week is Emmanuel Ogba, who I believe only has like something like one sack or one quarterback pressure over the past few weeks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um. I know we've kind of differed on our, you know, worry scale over the past few weeks. But given that last week there was no starting corner and this week we see the return of X, where is your worry, where's your worry meter on the, you know, defensive side of the ball? 10 being, I can't believe it, like, this is it. I am completely hit panic. And one being, I'm completely chilled. With Agba? The, the defense in general, but specifically, but also Ogba as well. So it's funny because, you know, I was the one who wanted to know where the panic meter was with the defense. And my panic meter was a seven before the Jets game. And after the Jets game, I didn't ask the question because I thought it was unfair on, on what the 40 points looked like. It wasn't really on the defense per se. So – my panic meter didn't change after we played the paper planes and it stayed at a seven. So my, and it's still hard now to assess where the panic meter goes without a quarterback on the other side of the ball. Like is the defense getting off the field on third down, third down, third down, third and fourth downs, or are they blowing it? So we still, we still need to see some more. We're going to see some more Sunday. My panic meter is still at a seven with the defense. I do think the penalties would not be like this if we had the uh, what was it the the what what was the name of the wall? TNT wall takes yeah. no talent. You know what I'm saying? If Brian Flores was still on a, on the defensive side, we would not have penalties like this. We would be more disciplined. You don't have to make grown men walk in a single foul line around the facility. But you can you could be more disciplined on defense. So I'm gonna keep my panic meter at a seven for the defense. But it, it's the arrow's going up still. <laughs> it's not it's not it's not like we're 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 leveling out. It's it's still going up. Um, I need to see more from Agba, bro. Bro, you you got you got paid. You know what I'm saying? You you got your money. I'm not in the in the in the game to back pay uh, to like pay people for what they did before. Like, bro, you, you, you're making a lot of money. I, I, I need you to shake the dice a little bit more. 
I need to see that dance a little bit more. I, one of the best celebrations in the league, by the way. But I, I need to I need to see that. So panic meter with X. There's not no panic meter with X. This is this is I done foretold this. Like there's no way someone could st- sustain that level of play. And we all knew that he had to um regress. And this is what re- regression looks like. I thought this injury would come last year, though. I thought, you know, he, he wouldn't be as healthy as he was last year. And we was going to get an unhealthy ex last year. But it's unfortunate, man. I don't wish an uh, injury on nobody. But at the same time, these boys get paid a lot of money, Kadeem. Yeah, definitely. Um, I've, 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 re- I've re- really been trying to think about it. And I don't want to give excuses and say, you know, against the Ravens, they was on the field for, for so long. And then... You had, you know, the Bills game and then you had a short week against, you know, the Bengals and all that kind of stuff. It's like at some point, yo, guys, can you show up? I reckon my panic meter is extremely high with um, Byron Jones. I'm starting to look at Byron Jones as like, is this a repeat of the Will Fuller injury where it wasn't that serious? You meant to come back and then we didn't see you again. Um... I think we will see Byron Jones at some point this year. But the fact that they're kind of looking at William Jackson, it's kind of like they don't know if or they don't know when he comes back and what Byron Jones are going to get back. And I'm still a believer of when all the pieces of this puzzle fit together, we'll see a significant jump because it's easy to, I guess, avoid pressure from our defensive line when in the nicest way possible, you've got no Ibanogany doing no no Ibanogany things, and you don't have the tandem of X and Byron Jones on the outside. I do want to see a bit more of the Sack Brothers in terms of Javon Holland kind of playing more around the line of scrimmage. I kind of feel like he's been playing a lot of, you know, basically safety, which is completely fine. But I kind of feel like, obviously, you're going to adapt as, you know, from season to season. So, Teams don't know exactly what you're doing, but I do feel like, and maybe it's because of the injuries to X and injury to Byron Jones, but I do feel like what the Dolphins were doing well last year, they're not doing this year. And I get it. You don't want to show the exact same looks. But in my personal opinion, no one really seemed to figure out how to stop the, how to stop the Dolphins' defence. And I kind of want to see a bit more of, you know, Yes, you still, you still kind of got like the amoeba defense look, but let's start seeing you know defend the podcast of Von Holland start sacking the quarterback. Let's mix it up a bit, and hopefully that kind of panic will set in, and a quarterback holds onto the ball for a tad longer, and then a Jalen Phillips, a Emmanuel Ogba, a Christian Wilkins, everyone can start seeing off. I know is it Jason Keck is in the comments saying I warned you about Jalen Phillips, um. Right now, the dude's right, and no, nah, bro. I'm gonna tell you why Keck ain't right. Keck, mm. for some reason, Keck don't don't think I rock with him. I actually <laughs> rock with him because he's authentic. So I rock with you, Jason. Um, no, I really do. Even though we might disagree, I really do rock, rock with Jason. Um, but here's my thing: Jadavian Clowney was on his way to being a bust. I like oh, Jadavian Clowney's a bust. He's a bust. And then that last year. He kind of broke out and then had maybe two seasons. I can't remember off the bat, but he did just enough to David and Clowney to not be considered a bust. You know what I'm saying? So Jalen Phillips is way too early in, in his career to be considered a bust or he will be a bust or projected. Yeah, projection, you, we, we can do projections. But I don't think uh, the, the jury's still out. The jury's still out on Jalen Phillips. And – I'm okay with it. I, I think we should not put him in covers as much as we do. I think we he should just put his hand in the dirt and go every single time. Because if that's the case, bro, matter of fact, this shout out to Keck. The man broke the sacks, the sack record for the Dolphins last year. How can we how can we say he's not uh worth it yet? It's too early, it's too soon. I think we use him the right way. And this could be an indictment on on Boyer. You know what I'm saying? So, like, look, the whole defense is acting up right now, not just Jalen Phillips. Uh, Agba's not getting home either. So, yeah, man. And I think to bring it all together, 
I think it's because the corners are hurt. Yeah. You want to put you want to put no ignominy on the island when we go zero. That sound that sound right to you, Kadeem? You no, know what I'm saying? Do, do you want to put? I don't even know one of them corners. There's another corner out there that we got. I can't even remember his name. You want to put dude Elijah on the Campbell. island? Elijah Campbell, Keon Crossan. Oh, it's it Campbell. Campbell. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. It is Keon Crossan. Yeah. Keon, like you want to put Keon Crossan on the island, bro? Like, like, nah, bro. I'm not trying to. It's, so that's what happens when you go zero, which is our signature, is to go zero. You you're gonna leave some people one on one, and we we can't do it right now. So the whole defense, the identity is different, but. Boy, you get paid money to 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 make it work, and right now it's not working as good as we would like for it to work. Music, 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 music.